Hey there guys, so here is my Happy Model Mobula 6. This uh, little whoop, 65mm whoop, I do bash it around quite a lot and I've had it for quite a while and I do like to fly this thing quite fast and as you can see it's taken quite a beating. So you can see that uh, parts of it I've tried to glue and fix up here so you can see that there is a little bit of CA glue with bicarb soda so that's a little bit of a trick that I've seen on YouTube that works quite well. It holds it on quite nicely. It does come out but I just apply a little bit more or remove it and redo it again and it works quite well so it has been quite a durable frame except for the fact that it does break over here and here but uh, yeah you can see it does bend and everything quite a lot and I do thrash this thing into trees and uh, concrete so it has survived um, the canopy has uh, broken uh, I find the canopy is very very fragile and I've replaced it with this TPU version here that I found on Thingiverse so it's quite nice it doesn't damage and it, it, the camera has been quite durable in there it hasn't uh, died yet so one thing that has started to die and why I'm making this video is the VTX so the VTX has started to die I get black flashes and very bad uh, range and signal on this so I can't even fly further than about 30 meters without it going really bad and not being able to see anything so I've tried to do everything in terms of changing the antenna and everything it doesn't seem to work so um, I saw a video on um, YouTube from props off and uh, he did a really good overview of how to install an external VTX onto this crazy bee f4 light board and I think I might give it a go um, I might risk actually damaging the entire board um, I find that the ESC's on this board has actually survived quite a fair beating so um, it's quite rare I have had other boards that actually have died where the ESC's won't work and since it's an all-in-one the whole board is useless so um, I'd like to replace the, the VTX on this and here we are I've decided to get this one here so this is a happy model OVX 300 and it has open VTX and it is I think the smallest VTX that I could find on AliExpress or online uh, I think it weighs up uh, the board itself is 0.9 of a grams so I think it actually will add quite in terms of the weight of a, a 65 millimeter whip a lot of you will complain that it is uh, you know too heavy uh, to add on something like this but I'd rather have something usable at least and I can still fly around in the house uh, than not have one at all because the signal on this is just not good enough but I like to just give it a go and uh, hopefully it'll work out so thanks to props off for actually showing that video um, there's quite a few things that need to happen on the board to remove and then also solder on some very hard places to actually get the uh, VTX to work on this board so we'll give it a go see how we see how it how it works and uh, hopefully we can get this uh, board working with better range for the video I'm Nam Pham let's get into it all right so I'm just going to tear this thing down to the main board Alright, so the first thing that I'm going to do is take off the antenna that I installed here. It's not the original copper uh, insulated wire, uh, but I'll be taking this one off. Alright, so one of the other things that we'll need to do is get to the 5 volt pad and I'll grab something to point here with it, but in here you can see that there is a 5 volt pad right down there and then there's also the ground pad as well, which is right here. Now I don't know if I can get into that 5 volt pad and I've checked that the camera here, this is where the camera plugs into, this 5 volt pad is sharing the same uh, regulator as this pin here, which is a 5 volt pin for the camera. So, props off said that uh, you know you can wire it to this 5 volt pad. I don't know if this this BEC would actually handle the current that is drawn by the camera and also the VTX, but I'm going to go by his 
um, his tutorial and give that a go. So I'll wire it up and see if it works or not. Hopefully it doesn't uh, blow anything up. So let's give that a go now. All right, so I think I've done it there. I've tinned that five volt pad. I tried to actually tin that uh, pin that's on the uh, camera plug, but I wasn't able to get any solder on there, but I think I've got some on that five volt pad and also the ground there as well. So hopefully I can get in there with a, a silicon wire and I can um, solder that on. So I'll give that a go now. Okay, so I've pre-tinned the wire and I'm just going to try and squeeze in there and somehow get this down. Alright, so I think I've got the 5 volt on, which is good to see. I will try and get the ground on now. It looks like I've got it on there. Hopefully that's good. I'll inspect it off camera, of course. It was hard to do this soldering with the camera right on top of the the uh, board itself. So I can't look directly onto it. So hopefully you guys saw that. Um, I'll review this obviously after this recording um, and see if it's all in there. So I'll do a bit of testing with the multimeter, make sure I haven't shorted anything I shouldn't have. It looked pretty straightforward. So. Um, yeah, I will uh, continue on. Okay, so the next one is going to be the video out and PropSoft says that it is these two capacitors here where you can see that it does have um, these two, this side of it. So that part and also this side here, these two capacitors, we'll need to bridge them and solder a wire to that. So I'm just going to try and do that really quickly. So. Hopefully all goes well. Okay, I'm not sure if I've done it there. I'm just going to visually inspect that closer. Right, so it doesn't look like I've actually hit the capacitor on the left there, so I'm just going to give that a go again. Alright, I think I've got it there. Alright, so it looks alright to me. Um, I think it is bridging those two capacitor ends properly. And uh, yeah, we'll move on to the next part. Alright, so 
think the hard soldering bits are now done. Uh, the last bit of soldering that I'll need to do is the T2, which you can see in the middle there. So I'm just going to tin that up and then wire up as well. So let's give it a go. Right, so the, the pad is now tinned. I'll get a wire to hook that up. Okay, so just about to wire this up, T2 pad. All right, so that looks okay to me. It might need a little bit more flux, but I think I think that's a good connection anyway. So I'll go with that for now. All right. So now that we have all the wires for the new VTX to go in, the last thing we have to do is disable the onboard VTX. So um, you can see here that it is the VEC of the VTX right next to the antenna pads. So what props suggests is, or props off does suggest anyway, is to remove this component here. So he says to just completely shatter it uh, and then solder or desolder as much as you can away from that. So that would actually remove the uh, power to the onboard VTX. And hopefully that doesn't cause any interference with the uh, VTX that I'll be installing. So I'm gonna give that a go. It's a bit gut wrenching, but hey, I'm already here let's go. Okay, so I hope you can see it there. I've tried to remove as much as I could from it, um, that component. So basically gone at it with uh, side cutters, as you saw, and started plucking the uh, shell off it. And then there was a coil inside. So I removed all of that coil with this blade here. Uh, and I can't see any other uh, electrical wires or the, um, the coil that's in there. So hopefully that's enough because I can't seem to take this whole piece off I'm not sure how to do that but I'm gonna give it a go um, and well not a go to take it off but I'm just gonna leave it as it is and see if it actually has disabled the VTX on board okay so we've uh, got the uh, VTX here now so I'm just gonna wire up the um, these wires up so I'm just gonna put the VTX or the board underneath it like this and I'm gonna start soldering it on with the uh, Oops, just bumped the camera. That's how close it is. So I'm just gonna move this out of the way and I'm gonna start soldering the other bits on there. So I'm gonna give this a go. I'm gonna have to prop up the, the mother board or the uh, flight controller board up a little bit and then we'll give that a go. All right, I'm just gonna tin up the pads. Okay, so the first wire I'll put on is the video, or maybe I should go from the other side, it might be a bit easier. So that would be the 5 volt. Alright, 5 volt is on, I'll do the ground now. Okay, so the ground is on. The next one is A, and I believe that's for smart audio. We'll get that on. And the last one is the actual video signal. So let's get that on. All 
All right. So it looks all right to me there. I'm just going to visually inspect that off camera and hopefully we're all done and we can get this firing. So I will have to put this antenna, of course, on as well right before powering it up. But uh, I'm going to give it a go, test it out and uh, you'll see soon. All right, so here we are. We're up and we're flying and it works perfectly fine. Uh, it, I was quite surprised I plugged it in and powered up my goggles and I didn't even have to change any settings. The T2 pad was already configured uh, on the beta flight so that it would allow for the smart audio to configure the VTX to the right uh, channel. So it was working straight out of the box. What you can see here is just me flying around in the, the front of my yard here. So it seems to be working all right. So it's, uh, it's brought back my Mobula 6 with their broken flight controller where the VTX wasn't working and I get to fly around and still use it. And it does seemingly quite well still. So it uh, doesn't get that great of a range. And I've seen other people getting much better range than I have, but maybe I've got really bad signals around here, interference maybe, but also because I'm using very cheap goggles as well. I don't have great analog goggles, but they do the job. I can get to fly around my, my little whoop. So it is uh, working as you see there. So I'm going to have to thank uh, Props Off who showed us all how to do this on his video. And I went out and did it here so you can see every step by step. Uh, just one thing to note also is that I'm recording this using my DJI goggles with a, uh, the hack that I did with the video signal out of my Emacs teleporter, transporter. I can't remember what the uh, model is, but I just uh, wired up a signal out from that into the DJI goggles to record this DVR. So it's not the best. I've noticed that the DJI uh, analog video in isn't great. It actually degrades the video quite a lot. Anyhow, there you go. So I hope you enjoyed that and hope you learned something. Uh, leave a comment down below if you uh, would like to ask any questions or suggest anything new that I should have done or something better. But uh, I've got this thing to work and it uh, seems to be good so far. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.